Now, I bet most of you are like, where, where is my solo leveling reaction? We're editing it, okay? We have a video from Annie News to watch. It's Sung Jinwoo's reawakening in episode 3, Cut Content. Let's see what he has to say. One of the most important things tied to Sung's development is the system he gained which essentially governs all of it. Okay. The anime showed him integrate with it rather quickly, and even the manhwa has him accept it like it's nothing. It's in the novels though where things are a little bit slower that Sung approaches this system with a bit more caution. He takes his time to discover what it is, is that he's dealing is, with. Is, them, is that cautious here right there? System with a bit more caution. Is that cautious here right there? I'm not really sure, but every time cautious here ever gets voted onto a poll, it goes second place. He's too cautious. He takes his time to discover what it is he's dealing with, then elaborates on what certain aspects of it does for him. So, with episode 1 and 2 being these faithful adaptations of the prologue, okay. it's here in episode 3 where Sung's journey really starts that there's a lot more cut content with both the system. Oh, that's the scorpion you know, thingy that was hunting us in the webtoon, okay. And him. It's a lot of details I recommend sticking around to the end for because it paints a clearer picture of who it is Sung wants to be. Stuff I myself didn't even know when I was reading the manhwa. Before we get into all that though, hashtag ad to make your browser a bit more you. Like you know what to do. Raid Shadow Legends discount code. Use any news for your free pull back to the regular content. It's like a game, covering chapters 11 to 13 from the manhwa and chapters 8 to 13 from the web novel. I suppose a creative difference between this scene and the one from the novel is the inclusion of a female voice dictating what it was the prompts were telling him. A female voice. It was voice. a voice in his head, not unlike Rimuru's, interacting with him as he chose whether we, or not to become. We didn't hear like the great sage, right? No, we didn't hear like a female voice. There was no like female AI, which would have been actually kind of nice if there was like a sassy AI. But then again, I don't think comedy is like a focus point of her solo leveling. I'm a player. This voice claimed he'd completed a secret quest, then asked repeatedly if he'd accept the proposition being presented to him. The thing about accepting anything from anyone, though, was that for Sung Janu, who grew up in poverty, he was well aware that there was likely some sort of price associated. Huh. If there was one less in- Huh. Never really thought about that. You know, you get like a contract, Courage the Week pops up, you cleared it, and now you get these like leveling powers. But like, what is the consequences? The consequences is basically growing a foot, getting a sick new look. You just look like a K-pop idol now. And you're also super powerful with seemingly infinitely scaling abilities according to whatever the level cap is. But negative consequences that come with this. It's too early to even think about that, but that's a very interesting point. And he'd learned in life, it was that nothing in it was free no matter how generous it was. So to him, he knew there'd be some sort of cost, and it was that cost he was considering what as was the he cost? completed the offer. Uh oh. For an offer in which the other choice was to simply die. I mean, the other choice is, hey, you want to potentially be saved with maybe some bad things happen to you, or do you want your heart to stop beating in 0 0.02 seconds? I think the option is very clear in what we're going to choose. I, though, there wasn't really much to think about once his imminent death was all but... <laughs> That's hilarious. How the blade, so this guy was the final one that was about to strike us down, right? And then the UI just popped up. So it's like, if we click the client, the blade would start falling down again. Confirmed to him. I mean, he could literally see the sword coming closer a millimeter at a time, and behind that were all the weapons from every other section. It's not really a choice at so, this point. So, as Sung thought to himself, why not? The system responded and took that as confirmation. It didn't need him to speak or even say yes, as all it required was an acceptance of any kind. Okay. That's when Sung would wake up in a room very familiar to him, and it's here the anime makes one major change. Wait, woke up in a room very familiar to him. It's a hospital bed, implying he's always in the fucking hospital because he fucking sucks and he always gets bodied by goblins. Anwa. The person alongside Wu Jin Chul wasn't the character we now know as Kang, but instead a less prominent side character I don't think we see much. They don't really look, I don't know, the anime makes them look a lot cleaner. The webtoon are here, they kind of look like fucking junkies. Of later. The reason I think they changed it to Kang is because unlike the random- Oh, Mr. Kang right over here kind of looks cool though, look at this. Of later. The reason I think they changed- So the guy on the right is just like a random mob character in the webtoon, but they included Mr. Kang over here, it right? It's not Kang, it's Kang, by the way. It's really, you would never imagine it, right? Like, Korean, it's like, it says K-A-N-G. Anybody's gonna think it's Kang, but for some reason, it's called Kang. So technically, it should be like G-A-A-N-G, but who the fuck knows who translates Korean to fucking English pronunciations, man?
is because, unlike the random partner Wu had with him, Kang becomes more prominent in one of the later arcs. Oh? He's a more major character than really? the partner from the manhwa, and as such, it would make sense to introduce him now so his appearance can seem uh, that makes sense, yeah. later. Now, something to know about Wu's hunter surveillance department is that- Yo, they look so much more sinister in the webtoon art compared to the anime. As the team in charge of monitoring and keeping hunters in line, they were the strongest out of all the departments. Mm. I mean, if your job was to enforce the- They're like, they are like the strongest. These two dudes in the suits are not NPCs. They're like super important and like the strongest of all the departments. But like, that's the departments. What about versus the actual hunters? Because those guys are basically just salary men. It, part of the guild association, but these are actual hunters. I wonder how they could kind of compete if you judge their power levels. The law to those who could abuse their powers to go above it, then it made sense that you'd have to be just as strong or even stronger than them. Mm, okay, the just as strong or stronger. This department is the only one filled with high level hunters. How Who's high? Been an A rank hunter for just A rank. Six okay. Years now, and it was throughout that time that he felt he'd seen pretty much everything. So, when six different people recounted something he didn't even know was possible, his entire focus shifted into figuring out how to make sense of it. He had reached out to other guilds and even contacted foreign agencies, but no matter how hard he looked, not a single person had experienced anything remotely close to what Sung described. It was an anomaly that required a bit more out-of-the-box type thinking. Double awakening. So we saw Second awakening. This during Wu's conversation in the anime, but the full extent of his theory went beyond that of just a reawakening. You see, since the undeniable proof was there that dangerous monsters existed within the gate, the fact none escaped or were even found anywhere inside left the association thinking the only possible answer was that Sung Janu took care of them. And that's where, like, the assumption that did you second awaken? Did you actually clear this dungeon? Because how could they just all be gone, right? And, like, what happened to the statues? I mean, they could walk, so maybe they just walked away somewhere, man. I don't know. They, they clearly could walk. I'm just trying to think, like, okay, after all that shit, they basically just disappeared, leaving Sung Jimu just in the altar like this. Interesting. And for them to hear the same story from everybody, but, like, the evidence isn't there, it is incredibly suspicious. Sure, this was definitely an absurd possibility, but the fact it was a possibility made it something that needed to be considered. The association wasn't going to rule out anything yet. Especially since this was the only answer that made sense of everything. So, despite it being so incredibly unlikely that Sung Janu did defeat these monsters, the possibility he did by reawakening needed to be checked out anyway. Okay, and, and then that's why they the gave the device, that right? Sung had become this all new powerful hunter that. I mean, not just yet, but he's about to get there. Wu excited to figure out whether he did or not. If Mr. Wu would just wait like a day or two for Sung Jin Wu to clear the instance dungeon, like today's episode, right? He should be clearing the instance dungeon. He should have leveled up to a certain point, probably not enough to actually take out the statues, right? But it's gonna be more than like level 10. So if only he waited like a day, a week, or a month after to come back, maybe he'll come back later too. Who knows? Not. They didn't really show this in the anime, but... The I mean, if these guys are recurring characters, and they've already visited Sung Jin Mu here, like, in, in like a couple episodes, they're gonna realize, hold the fuck up, why does this dude look so much cooler? He's like a foot taller, he's way more handsome, he's so much stronger, what the fuck happened, right? Shouldn't they get, like, suspicious later on? Surely they will visit that, right? There was a genuine excitement to Wu as he waited in anticipation of seeing what Sung had reawakened into. Reason being that after hearing the horror stories of the types of enemies Sung was up against, to defeat them all while also being unconscious was a level of power that could very well go even beyond the S rank. I mean, we do probably go beyond S rank, but not just yet. But that left Wu curious as to the type of power they would be dealing with. That's why in the case this did turn out to be something beyond the S rank, all information about the incident was made confidential. Mm. Only those involved would ever get to know about it. They had also placed Sung in a private room to keep things tight, then provided him with the best medical assistance since he was possibly a person of high value now. Do they even give us the fucking this full Adidas tracksuit here? He's got a new fit, you know? Wu may have been thinking a bit too ambitious himself, though, since the thought of Sung being a nation-level hunter was- NATION-LEVEL HUNTER! Now, are, is this spoilers? Not really, because you motherfuckers in chat just fucking go, you nation-level, there's something to be on this ring! Like, shut the fuck up, stop spoiling me, but basically, nation-level hunter. Hunter beyond S class. This is like obviously a national level. Japan's strongest hunter, Korea's strongest hunter, China's strongest hunter. Like these things can exist because you know we actually work with real life countries. So there's got to be like an American hunter too, right? Some big hog, right? Yeah, there's got to be. Wasn't out of the realm of possibility either. 
To him, he felt anyone strong enough to deal with a monster capable of disintegrating people could very well be up there at that godly nation rank. Okay. This was a league high above the S rank where the hunters within are said to be stronger than even nukes. They were rare. Did, did, hold up, hold up, hold up. We saw Shadow here pop up for a second. You saw that, right? Integrating people could very well be up there at that. <laughs> hold up, throwing a little shade, are we? High above the S rank, where the hunters mm. within are said to be stronger than even new. Hmm. So, are we gonna do a power scaling video? Come on, someone's gotta do a power scaling video, right? Like, come on, someone fucking make some dumb power scaling video uh, arguing why how Sung Jin Woo is gonna surpass, you know, Shadow from the Eminence and Shadow. Imagine how many views it'll get because so many people will be arguing in the comments. Oh my god, I can just imagine the fucking drama, dude. Nukes. They were a rare breed of individuals whose might could only be rivaled by each other. Okay. Global superpowers that swayed the very authority of entire nations. Less than 10. I feel like these are such spoilery images from the web team, but it is just like black caricatures. You can't really see anything, right? It's kind of hidden and everything, so it probably doesn't matter. It just kind of gets us anticipated and hyped up for like these so called nation level hunters that are just. No one can compete with them except themselves. Existed in the entire world, and with some possibly being the first from Korea, the very idea made Wu ecstatic. He was revel. Oh, he's hoping that. So Korea doesn't have a nation level hunter is ba well, maybe we do, but we want more of it. So this, so I thought that Mr. Wu here was like, um, I wasn't even thinking about the possibility of like fucking a nation level hunter. I just thought that Mr. Wu was thinking, Hey, you know, there are like five guilds in this place. And if, if it's under capitalism, you know, fucking corporations exist. People want to, you know, poach each other's talent. So I thought he was trying to get an early scout on Mr. Sung Jin Woo, who could have been reawakened because, I mean, maybe he cleared the dungeon. I don't really know. He still survived, right? That, that was the, the assumption he was going on. So I thought he wanted to like kind of, uh, what's the word? You know, scout him early, poach him. And just like give him a good deal but he's like oh he thought that maybe this could be like a nation level hunter <laughs> which is kind of insane levels of cope but at the same time it's not he's actually right on point just give it a couple seasons right pulling in the thought that such a power could be born right here in his country okay it was when Wu saw that the <laughs> no it was i see in the webtoon it was also just power level of 10. it was 10 though that his disappointment Yikes. was immeasurable and day ruined my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. In fact, with the average E rank hunter being between 70 to 100 magic. That's the thing! We're basically a regular fucking civilian! The E rank is supposed to be between like average of 70, we're at 10! The idea Sung had even qualified to be a hunter was, well, laughable. Yeah, that's the thing! Like, so I think someone else made a, a point about this. What does, o, was it Otaku Spirit? Or was it AH Brandon reviews? But someone basically said, so you're telling me the Hunter Association measured this guy's power, saw his power level to be like level 10. And they're like, hmm, sure, you can just fucking go and hunt. Like, they don't give a fuck at all. They're like, sure, anyone can just go in. They, they, their standards and guidelines must be so loose. They don't give a fuck about protecting people. They're like, nah, if you can somehow fight, go in. And it doesn't matter, just go in. To Wu, it was a genuine miracle. See, he's he always getting beat by right goblins. Now. Wu had even gone and checked Sung's historical... This lady right here! You thought this is fine to send this kid in with a power level of 10? ...and what he found there was even more disappointing than the test he just did. Reason being that in the four years Sung had been a hunter for, he had actually grown weaker since his initial power was ranked at 12. What?! <laughs> we were at 12? How do we decrease? I thought that... I, I thought that power levels were fixed. I thought these were basically the numeric value that is fixed. It's a static value. You awaken and you're placed at a tier. But I thought that tier was based on the power level. But then obviously the power level, the numbers can, you know, it can fluctuate. It can be like a range, right? It'll still... Well, I'm not really sure anymore, actually. I thought it was like a fixed thing. So maybe like people are so bad they can keep decaying and fucking fall down a rank. I don't know. From then to now, he had gone from 12 magic power to 10 How? magic power. How? How? Obviously, this was due to getting a fresh reset by the system, but since a margin of two was- A fresh reset by the system? Implying if anyone else were- Okay, so this is specific to Sung Jimu. It's not that anyone can just, like, decay power levels. This is because we've become this so-called player. So we reset the power level. Ah, oh, I see, I see, I see. ...was within the range of error for the testing machine. Wu thought nothing of it, then left immediately. He neither told Sung what he saw nor answered his questions, but instead just thanked him for his time, then walked away. <laughs> he was so disappointed. Leaving Sung both confused and disappointed. What he thought was going to be the answer to all his problems was instead just a naive dream and hopeless delusion. I mean... I mean, aside from... 
is it a hopeless delusion? Because I feel like in a couple episodes, a couple seasons, his delusions are going to become reality. From feeling really rejuvenated, there was nothing about him that felt inherently different. He could tell just from that that he definitely couldn't have defeated those statues. Perhaps not even if he did reawaken. Sung would then think about two s rank hunters and wonder if they- The strongest hunter, Hunter, Che Jongin. Hunter, Go Guan Hee. I, I don't fucking know who they are. <laughs> Give me the fucking pictures. Actually, this might be guild leader Che. Again, the Korean way of pronouncing Choi, which is like, if you're an English speaker and you see C-H-O-I, you're going to think Choi, right? It's Choi, but it's actually Che, which is so weird. It's like C-H-W-E, like Che, Che Jonggin. And then this one is Go Kwon Hee. Kwon... K-W-O-N is a little bit more like uh, intuitive, right? Kwan, Kwan, it, it is pretty much that. But Choi, who the fuck decided to like have Che be Choi? It's so dumb, whoever fucking translated this shit. But with profiles like theirs being kept largely in secret, the only thing he knew about them was that they were regarded highly. There was nothing else to say for how they fought or how strong they were. Now, before I move on to the next scene with Sister. Jenna, to quickly highlight small details from the manhwa, Wu's expressions carried a bit of tiredness likely to show just how much he's always working. <laughs> yeah, he looks fucking exhausted in the webtoon. In the anime, he, looks, he seemed pretty fresh. The manimator housed a core costing 1 billion won, and the magic- What? Wait, 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 how much? Likely to show just how much he's always working. The manimator housed a core costing 1 billion won. The manimator housed a core costing of 750,000 USD? That's how much- Oh my god, I didn't realize how expensive this thing is! And the magic beast it came from was said to be A-ranked. Then, when Wu was recounting what happened to the other survivors, Sung had stopped him right before he got to Kim, which in turn led him to think back on how he abandoned him. Mm. This was probably the part Sung regretted the most, since if he was just a little bit stronger, things could have been different. A little bit stronger? <laughs> I don't know about a little bit stronger. Honestly, even if we fucking got our foot not cut off, right? If we somehow avoided that, we could have ran out with Juhi. But then Mr. It wouldn't be Sung Jimu, you know, popping off this show. It would be fucking Mr. Song. And we could just call him Mr. Song Jinwoo instead. He hated his inability to help out Song, and he hated even more the way Kim justified his selfish desire to leave. One last thing was a thought from Wu, which was an offhanded remark made immediately after Sung's testing. As soon as he saw his ranking was 10, he immediately accepted that trash would always be trash. I suppose trash. Well, trash can sometimes evolve if you become a player, I guess. It was a thought that highlighted the prejudice Yikes. B ranks get for being weak, which was more so shown in the anime when Sung was fighting in the dungeons for the first time. Right, they were like, please, just don't even fucking participate. You're just a fucking liability. Just sit back and let us carry this shit. This wasn't the only anime original scene we were given, though, since the large majority of the episode went to showcase other characters. And Cha Hei-in, she got fucking uh, introduced again in this episode. Like, she's getting involved in these early... Or, you know, early arc story, even though she's not supposed to in the webtoon, apparently. There was Ju Hee and her almost visit with Sung, a seemingly unnecessary scene showing the nurses looking for Sung, Wu reporting back to the chairman in the car, then Cha Hain getting her position yeah. as raid leader. All these were. She's gonna be a raid leader for some kind of B class party, right? But we're too early for that. I'm just trying to, like, think of, like, a position where Mr. Like, you can't just alter the story so much to the point where Sung Jin Wu and Cha Hain starts, like, interacting so early right so like i i would imagine they might interact but like in a, such a brief way that just like sets up for the future encounters but which is more like actually follows the light novel or the webtoon but it's really cool that this character is already getting introduced so future episodes maybe she'll flex maybe we'll be around there maybe we'll meet eyes and we'll just forget about yuhi yeah all these were original to the anime and all for the most part slowed the pacing down a bit Another exposition type original was the opening of the gate itself, which was actually quite interesting. Oh it's yeah, this is this is where the gates open and all, all the fucking civilians are like, where the fuck are these trash ass hunters, bro? Fucking wasting my taxpayer money. Get the shit out of my face. Did well to highlight the way that society had adapted to They don't care at all. I'm sure at first they were this extremely shocking phenomenon, but now as shown through these scenes in the We have a weather report. It's called the gate report, though. It's so normalized into this culture. The anime. They're nothing more than a minor inconvenience. It looks like a fucking Costco. A standard part of life that you'll see in the news, and if they happen to be on your way to work, you'll just have to take a detour. Yeah. This was a cool way of showing how gates are now just a part of life, and it does well to emphasize that modern part of this fantasy.
Yeah, and like these people were not happy about the gates being there for so long. So then I thought to myself, is there ever going to be a hunter that's so delusional, that's so mad? I don't know. Perhaps it's like a hunter that, you know, rose, rose up in popularity, but then got a bunch of shit on by fans, like some emotional idol stuff, right? Surely there's got to be something like that. And then they become so angry and mad that they just intentionally let a gate break happen. They're like, fuck these monkeys. <laughs> let the monsters come out and kill them. Maybe there's like a hunter that's delusional enough for that. That sounds like a fun story. Now, switching back to Sung's time in the hospital, when his sister came in, she was actually crying a lot. Normally, she would- Really? She just slapped us and said, fuck you for being so weak. I'm gonna drop out of school so I can support you, dumbass. No, she didn't say that, but you know. Would come in and just start hitting and scolding him, but this time she was bawling her eyes out while doing so. It was a scene that made Sung look deeply into just how stupid he's been recently. <laughs> After coming close to death so many times before, he couldn't understand why he was so willing to put himself through all of that. So from now on, he knew the most important thing was to come back alive. For a bit more information on Jenna, she was one of the top students at her school now. Her teeth are fucking really strong. What the fuck is this smile? <laughs> okay, she's a top student. Before she was this girl who could never be separated from video games, but after her mother got- Which is a gamer? That's when she became a proper student studying in hopes of one day becoming a doctor. This brings okay. us now to Sung's initial exposure to the leveling system, which in the novels was surprisingly fleshed out a lot more. Not only were his thoughts a lot more human, but his approach to handling it was a lot more inquisitive. So when he saw the prompts and was trying to make sense of them, his initial thoughts were that this was PTSD or something. What? He never- He thought these menu screens opening up with PTSD? Believed that they were truly there and instead <laughs> chalked it up to him being crazy. Maybe that's why he skipped the fucking daily quest even though the penalty, you know, timer was going down, right? He's like, all right, whatever. When he traversed the prompts and found the quest, the list of exercises he found inside made him certain that this- That's fucking annoying. You gotta do 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, and squats every day on top of a 10-kilometer run. Like 100? That's f I mean, you don't have to do weighted squats or, you know, stuff like that, but still, Jesus. It really was annoying. Every day? I mean, if it really Ugh. was that easy to make oneself stronger, then a workout like that would be something everyone would be doing. Yeah. So, what you Sung know, thought this- Doesn't matter, but Saitama did it in One Punch Man. You know what happened to him? He became bald. What are we gonna get out of it? We don't become bald, we just get a fresh new haircut. We grow up it and we get a fucking Korean plastic surgery to look like a K-pop idol. Plus to him was the product of his intent- It's so funny how people, like, obviously there's no point in me, like, going into detail and, like, like, I'm making- I'm just trying to make content and just be funny when I talk shit about, ha, huh, how is he gonna ever change into this K-pop idol, bro? Like, we don't- like, think about it. Gates are fucking opening. People are awakening powers. This is a fantasy world. So there's no point for me to even criticize or even ask questions about stuff like this. But I do it because I think it's funny. But the monkeys come into my fucking comment section. And they're like, actually, did you know that if you exercise long enough and if you do mewing, which is like, you know, fucking going your jaw and it's like, mm, 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 like that, you can actually change your facial structure. Like, shut the fuck up. I'm not asking for a realistic justification on how Sung Jin Woo became a level one mobster to level 99 mafia boss through just training. But it's so funny when people actually talk about shit like that as if like there needs to be a realistic reason. Then again, I do ask for it. Instead of solo leveling, this shit should be called solo. Solo mewing, dude. Solo look maxing. Hence desire to become stronger. Perhaps his mind was relaying what his body wanted, and the result of such an urge was the screen in front of him. A hallucination fueled by passion. He would then try to ignore it by laying down. That's why he just ignored the daily quest. The more he thought to himself, the more he began to feel that maybe he should try it. There was this ramping suspicion that maybe this was the real thing. So, as he got up to give the quest a try, Sung would stretch his arms and proceed to do 100 half-hearted elevated push-ups. They were definitely <laughs> These are back in high school. I don't know why, but no, no, no. There's these things called... Because, like, regular push-ups are... I don't know. If you've never done them, it might be difficult. But then there's these things called, like... I don't know why they call it girl push-ups. Because back in the day, you basically, like, instead of, like... On your toes, you would be on your knees and doing push-ups. I, I, I don't know. I didn't make that term up, but this is also funny. Elevated push-ups. These are like super easy, right? Not the full push-ups the quests intended him to do, but <laughs> I mean, nonetheless. Which they, what the fuck is this anime? What? What is this anime? <laughs> of course, nothing okay. changed when he finished, and it was that lack of proof which led him to ignore these delusions for good now. Okay, so he tried 100 shitty-ass push-ups elevated, and he's like, all right, nothing happened. I'm going to ignore the rest of the daily quest. Then he got fucked.
Now, it's when we get to the penalty quest in the alternate dimension that a few peculiar things were worth noting about it. Yes, the fact that we transport over here. Like, think about the mechanics, what this actually entails. This is a fucking get out of jail free break card. Now, I don't know, like, technically, like, like he was in the hospital, the penalty ran out, then he got transported, right? Then obviously he does get back into the hospital. But like, you need to be aware of mechanics like this because this opens up the possibility that we could teleport somewhere using this mechanic in a dire situation. The first was the lack of wind in what was clearly an outdoors environment. It's just some random fucking desert? What is this place? It. The sky was black with no sun. Like, is this our domain? Do we have a fucking demi plane like in fucking Skimmage and Moonlit Fantasy? Like, what is this? Moon or even stars, yet despite zero visible light source whatsoever, some could still see clearly as if there was light around him. It was a weird phenomenon that made wherever this was even more strange. Where is it? The centipedes were described to be taller than a five-story build. Centipedes? Oh, there are multiple centipedes in the webtoon. I see that. There's only one in the anime. And all in all, there were about seven chasing him. Seven? By the time it was over, the nurse and doctor who had come in to help had revealed more about Sung's particular circumstance. Aside from Sung being a person who the Hunter Association requested special care for, the hospital he was sent to was one specifically dedicated to hunters. It was a place in which many- Oh, there's like a hunter hospital? Interesting. Hunters met their end. A fate the nurse was far too familiar with, and one she could only hope the same wouldn't be said for Sung. Luckily, he was just on the floor covered in sand. Like, the sand even comes back with you too, like, look at this shit. But there was some fresh blood right where his hands were. It was the product of a cut he'd received shortly before, but one that was gone right as the nurse had checked him. It went away as he checked him? Is that important? So he sustained injuries in that different realm, but then as he teleported back, it was there for a bit, then it disappeared? I wonder what that really means. Is Fast it important? To after Maybe Sun's not. first completion of his dailies, and a set of active and passive skills could be seen available. Whoa, new webtoon panel. Active, speed level 1, tenacity level 1. Passive, unknown. Max. What, what's unknown passive here? Probably something to do with the system. Name Sung Jimu, job none, title. Job none! Strength 60. Okay, I mean, was there. What I remember from the panel in the anime, I don't think we've ever seen like a job or a class, right? We just see like these like attribute stats, right? Like strength, health, agility, intelligence. I think all, sense is, I think, perception in the anime, right? So I think at the end of the day, sense or perception is just literally what it is, which is, you know, it's just. Your in intuition, your instincts, something like that. To him, there was a blank passive at a match. Did they all show? Did they actually show the job also? That job being none. I don't remember a job being none here, bro. Because that's kind of like implying that hey, you know, once you get to like level ten, like in Maple Story, you can become like a warrior, or you can become a magician, a, a thief, you know, stuff like that. Max level unknown to us. The unyielding spirit passive decreasing all damage received. Wait, what? Unyielding spirit, when below 30% HP, all damage received is reduced by 50%. That's pretty cool. That's some like survival like tank warrior shit. When below 30%, then the sprint active increasing movement speed at a cost Just of by 30%. Per Put one mana per minute. Okay, this is pretty cool. They don't really go into detail about stuff like that in the anime, but okay. The unknown passive was something there from the very beginning, but the other two were- The unknown passive is clearly something to do with courage of the weak, right? Of us becoming a player. Who knows what it really is, but if it's already maxed, it's unknown. It's gotta be related to that. Gained while running away from the centipedes. So, in this new system that's operated just like a video game, it seems skills are gained by doing repetitive actions meeting a certain criteria. Okay. It's not stated in the anime just how invaluable such an ability is, but to put into context- What's another anime we're watching right now where every time we do more repetitions, we get a skill from it? Well, reincarnate as a slime is more like you get attacked by something, like you get hit by poison, you develop poison resistance. Isn't there a different anime we're watching where it's like you swing enough swords and your fucking blade ability goes up or some shit? I forget. Text why it is. Skills can't ever be gained by normal hunters. Whatever skills they receive- Skills can't be gained by normal hunters. Huh. Huh, okay. Receive upon their awakening are the skills they're stuck with unless they have a reawakening. Right. So, I, I never really thought about it in terms of skills. I only thought about it in terms of your overall power level and the rank that you're set at. But skills. I mean, yeah, obviously, like even Guildmaster Chen, the first example was like doing like this and there's some fire. I don't know. I, it wasn't like a, was it a name technique? I don't know, but this is, okay, this is getting interesting. The world, the world building is kind of expanding with these like skill names that we haven't really seen yet. 
The only way a hunter could ever learn a new skill without one is through the use of runestones found only by the slaying of magical beasts. What? Okay, you can get runestones that teach you the skills too, okay. So, on the rare occasions when an A or S rank monster is killed, a runestone will or sometimes S. drop which could then be used to imbue a hunter with a new skill. Okay, so only A or S rank is probably low ass fucking rate gotcha drop. And even if you get the skill, it might be a shitty skill or is it a good skill? The runestones often vary in the skills they imbue, but depending on whether it's a good or bad one, they could be sold at auction for either- Yeah, it could be even like way more expensive, right? Imagine you get a rune runestone for like, I don't know, it's called like resurrect. Some kind of like SSS, like, I don't know, national level healer skill. Like imagine how much fucking like price it was sold for. Hundreds of thousands or millions. Holy! In fact, the last runestone Sung could remember being sold was a rare healing one that taught the ability to restore any injury. Oh my Such God. a skill had caught the eye of an anonymous foreign S-rank hunter, and it was them who had bought it for their entire wall. Foreign S-rank hunter. Do we know that person yet? Probably not. Of 52 million. 52 so, million! One or USD? If such a skill could be worth that much, the value of all these lesser ones was to him unfathomable. Sure, Sprint and Unyielding Spirit may not be worth billions, but they were definitely useful even with their high men. Oh, for sure they are, yeah. Now, to add a bit more justification to his 100% And not strength, only is there, like, skill, it's, like, skill levels too, right? You can keep increasing, like, the proficiency of, like, ED skills, like, Tenacity Level 1. Who knows how, like, how much bigger this level, like, cap can go per skill, but that's pretty cool. So you have different skills, and the skills themselves can get leveled up to get more efficiency out of it. Spirit may not be worth billions, but they were definitely useful even with their high mana cost. Now, to add a bit more justification to his 100% strength build, intelligence and perception were skills that just didn't seem useful to him. Yeah, honestly, they at this current point, it really doesn't feel like it, huh? Like... The most useful probably is probably like strength right off the bat because like think about it like um, we're not talking about the end game we're talking about the early game bro is already too fucking weak he needs some kind of foundation so building like a foundation on strength is probably smart but i don't think he's gonna go all in on strength right he has to like at some point put something to agility because he fights with daggers and shit so that's why i'm thinking his job or like you know class is gonna be something like roguelike because he seems to be like this like thief like assassin and based on the openings and the different promo pictures we've seen right since he knew he was a fighter type hunter, to him what he needed most was strength, agility, and vitality. Yeah, exactly. Mostly strength. Since Those three are probably no, most important. Easiest. Okay, this is so dumb. They're trying to showcase that he got stronger, and look at this. Agility and vitality. Look at this shit. Mostly strength, since that's what he thought would. Oh, he christened Apple so strong while looking out a window while monologuing. Ooh. Make things easiest. Sung would then try and lift his bed to see if it made a difference, but with no memory on what it weighed before, he had no way to distinguish whether the bed was just light or he had gotten stronger. Hmm. He would then add three more points from the reward he got from the penalty quest, and it was this time that the bed felt significantly lighter. It was a result of being 60% stronger than how he was five minutes ago. Okay! So, Sung was ecstatic at the fact that the system was real and decided to vent this excitement by lifting all the other furniture in the room. Did you start lifting beds and chairs? Of being able to become I'm so strong. Day. Even if his level wasn't something he could race, just being able to- Yet! Is there an EXP bar? Where's the EXP bar? It says level can't be raised yet. Where, where is the EXP bar, man? What the fuck? To improve his stats was enough for him. It was a thought he'd dreamt about for years, now turned reality. One he knew everyone was always laughing at him for, yet one that was now possible despite all that adversity. Man, I want there to be a scene where we power up and we go- I mean, this guy's dead. I mean, both these guys are dead as <laughs> if Mr. Song is missing an arm, but I want us to like kind of like go back and flex on people. I don't know if there's like another dungeon, maybe we can participate with some of the members that were part of this first episode. Then we fucking flex on them, you know? I, I like- in my power fantasy shows, I always love a moment where we just flex on the people that look down on us. I think that's the main important- uh, it's a payoff moment, right? I think everybody looks forward to that. One that was now possible despite all that adversity. To him, this was an opportunity he wasn't going to squander. Of course, the phenomenon still could have been a second awakening, so in order to find out whether it really was It's or not. not Sung went to the internet to do some research. <laughs> About second he would awakening? Use the computer right there in his special VIP hospital suite, then scour the internet for pretty much anything. <laughs> Okay. Whether it be sites accessible only to hunters or information he needed to Bro, Bro's just fucking Googling what is Second Awakening Reddit on Google and he's just gonna read a bunch of fucking comments and the sub posts, okay? Before, Sung gathered all he could on the topic of reawakening. 
Unfortunately, none matched up with what he was going through, so the only conclusion he could make was that this was different. Yeah, it he is. He even posted on a hunter forum to see if anyone- Wait, wait, should you? I'm suddenly able to see floating screens in the air like a video game. Should you be posting shit like this? Maybe you've posted on 4chan. And then people will probably say something like, you're crazy, bro. This guy's insane. Knew anything, but the only response is- You're schizo. <laughs> nice bullshit. Think you're crazy, bro. Check the floor for some loose screws. Think you've been playing too much games. Are you a comic book writer? Here's a direction to the nearest hospital, lol. Can you give me more details? Looks like we need to curate who can post your mods. Mods, anybody? Crazy. Damn. So, with all that research coming up with nothing, so mean. Sun truly believed himself to be something special now. For all he knew, he was the only hunter with this ability. A unique case with a unique system, the limits of which he intended to explore with zero hesitation. The next scene was the actual opening of the pen and bandages Sung had mentioned in the anime, which for the most part the wouldn't be that important if not for the two valuable things he had learned from it. The first was that the information yeah, the key. prompt only popped up to items held in inventory, and the second was the fact that he had an inventory. You got a bag a now, yeah. Wait, 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 how does this work? We have an inventory? So we have like a pocket dimension where we can just store items in? It's just like this, I don't know, different dimension. We don't have to actually have a bag. But basically, if we get new items, a big sword, axe, one that we can just put it in his inventory, it just goes away. Everything he earned could be stored inside. O okay. He had expected such a thing to be empty, but to his surprise, Kim's sword was right there waiting for him. This 2000... Kim's sword? Mr. Kim? We took the sword? When did we take the sword? I don't remember this shit. I get, did Mr. Kim, when running away, leave the sword behind in the altar and he picked it up there? And he kind of had it with him the entire time and it got, just got absorbed into the bag? Oh, I didn't remember that. Okay. Dollar sword. Okay, item. King Sang Shik's uh, steel sword. <laughs> Type. Sword. Attack. Plus 10. Cool. $2,000? She, <laughs> she got damn. Desperately picked up back in the temple was now his to use whenever he wanted. $2,000 for this piece Kim of shit? Would ask for it back if he ever saw Sung use Imagine, uh, you, bro, he fucking betrayed us. We meet him again outside. He's gonna fucking ask for it back. Fuck you, it's mine now. It, but to Sung, this and his new power. Sell it right now. Sell it. They were hard fought rewards he had zero intent on ever giving back. Yeah, exactly. In fact, if anything, the encounter in the temple had given him even more than that. It had reinforced Fuck the notion that he needed to become strong, then made it clear that there was no merit in being needlessly kind. Since his last kindness was rewarded with betrayal, Sung well, the kindness was met with betrayal, which led to Sung Jin Mu receiving these powers, which is probably the best thing that could ever happen to him, right? So technically, they did every they, they did us a favor here, Mr. Kim. Maybe he is a good guy after all. Sung vowed to never put his life in danger for anyone again. He would never put his life in danger for anyone again. Interesting. So he's not going to be like a hero. He's gonna be like a piece of shit. He's gonna always gonna look out for his self-interest. We'll see how he develops, but in the anime, I haven't really had a, a feeling that he would turn into that kind of character. In fact, still, he's very wholesome, and I feel like he might end up being like a hero type where he just saves everybody. He would never risk himself under the false precept of the greater good, and above okay. all, put his life first. So, if we were all to right. sum up the two things Sung committed to here, the first would be his commitment to becoming stronger, and the second a desire to become cold. I know that the desire to become cold this has yet been really shown in the anime like an inner monologue from Sung Jin Mu that goes into how I can't really like think for every other people I need to think for myself first it's only me nobody deserves my help I'm gonna become this cold ruthless person hasn't really been a moment like that but let him cook it does sound a little bit edgy but Sung was a man who didn't forget his lessons he okay. was burned before, so now he just wanted to prevent that. Now, the novel does carry on with more stuff at the hospital, but since I think that's going to be shown somewhere in the next episode, I'll leave things here and cover that's the it. instance dungeon next week. Th no one's fucking talking about this player stuff, huh? This week actually had quite a bit of cut content. So no one so talks I about the fucking player stuff, it as dude. Much as I enjoyed reading it. All right, y'all know what to do. Please go mis give Mr. Annie News uh, a like on his video. Subscribe to his channel if you enjoyed the video, but... Yeah, I mean, the last episode was pretty much all just setup and exposition, but it was, like, really cool to understand the systems and what these, like, what the meaning of becoming a player even means. You got, like, a panel, you got skills, and then you got a bag, you can get gear in there. Everything is just, like, an actual game to him, right? I think the episode title of episode two or three was literally called It's Like a Game.
straight up a game. Still waiting on his, you know, class or job and still waiting on when he can actually level up. But today's episode, we should be, you know, defeating the, the red lichen. Wow, crazy cliffhanger. And then we're going to get through the instance dungeon. And then, who knows, maybe we'll pick a class. But that's it for me. And uh, I will do a YouTube outro here, but whatever. Y'all know what to do.